Um, so here's the first one that we're going to write the equation of. Uh, the first thing we've got to identify is we, we need to determine, is this sine or is this cosine? Is it sine or is it cosine? Um, it is cosine, okay? The easy way to determine that is you look at, does it start at the origin or is it off the origin? Okay, so sine uh, starts at the origin. Cosine is off the origin or off the x-axis. Or, uh, well, I guess origin is the best way to say it. So yes, this one is a uh, cosine function because it starts at 0, 3. Um, so this would be f of x is equal to, I'm going to leave some space because obviously uh, my amplitude is not 1. So that's the, uh, let's see here. Uh, the second thing that you need to do is determine the midline, okay? That's the coefficient d. We didn't have any of those in the examples we did before, um, but what I'm talking about here, remember the midline was that line that cuts this in half horizontally. You need to decide, is this shifted up or down any? Um, in this case, it's not. The easy way to determine that is to see if your maximum and minimum values are the same, they're just obviously one positive, one negative, so our maximum's at three, our negative is at negative three, so our midline is the axis. So we don't have a coefficient stuck on the end of this one. Then we can determine the amplitude. Uh, the reason why I do the midline before the amplitude is because um, if your function shifted, uh, that can, it can skew your perspective of the amplitude. Um, so this one is not shifted, so we can determine the amplitude just straight up. Um, and obviously the amplitude is 3. Um, it starts at positive 3, so the amplitude is, po or the coefficient A is positive 3. Okay, it's not negative 3. Then we've got to determine uh, B from the... Uh, trying to think what I had in that blank. Uh, I guess the period shown. Okay, uh, determine B from the period shown and the formula that your period is equal to two pi over B. Remember, we rearranged that a second ago um, for that to be B is equal to two pi divided by the period to determine what B actually is. So looking at this function right here, there's no change to our period, to the standard period. Um, if we start at 0, 3, uh, we end at 2 pi, 3. So there's no change to our period, so this is just simply 3 times the cosine of x. There's not a whole lot going on with this function. Let's look at one that does have a little bit more going on. Okay, so first of all, we've got to determine, is this sine or cosine? What do y'all think? Sine, okay? Now, this was a little bit harder to determine um, because the midline is not on the axis. I'll go ahead and tell you that. You can tell because of these points right here in the middle, um, clearly, uh, that, that should be on the axis, but it's not. So if you look at this as your midline, then you can see that we're starting, obviously we're not starting at the origin, but we are starting um, in the, on the midline, okay, so to speak. So this is a sine function. Well, another way that you can figure out that it's not cosine um, is that we're always, we're always zooming in right here at, at zero, okay? Um, cosine would start by decreasing from the point at zero. Um, this one starts increasing. Uh, or we don't, we don't have a maximum. The maximum for cosine is at zero. This is not a maximum at zero. 
this is even real. It'll become more clear the more examples we give you, okay? Yes, yes, that's another good one. Very, very good one. Um, cosine is symmetric about the x axis, okay? Not the x axis, the y axis. Cosine is symmetric about the y axis. Sine is not. If you go back to our original graphs that we did, okay, sine is not symmetric about the y axis. Um, it has what we call rotational symmetry. Um, cosine is symmetric about the y-axis. Okay? It's the mirror image of itself uh, on uh, the y-axis. So that is a very good way to determine whether it's sine or cosine. See, this one was symmetric about the y-axis. Um, this one is not. Okay? This one is not symmetric about the y-axis. So that's another very good way to determine whether it's sine or cosine. Thank you for watching. Okay. So then we said that the next thing we've got to do is determine our midline, okay? Um, it is not the axis right here. How can I tell? Because my maximum value is at 3, my minimum is at negative 1. Those are not the same. So that must mean that my function has been shifted. Um, obviously, it's been shifted up because my maximum is a greater number in magnitude than the minimum. So there are a couple of different ways that you can figure it out. Um, some people like to kind of um, find the halfway point. So the distance between our minimum and our maximum is 4. So that means halfway would be 2. So I can go 2 units down from my maximum. That means my midline is at 1. Um, so that is the coefficient on the very end. We added 1 to the entire function. Then we've got to determine our amplitude. How tall is our function? Well, how tall is it from the midline? It's two units, okay? Two units up or two units down to get to the maximum or the minimum. So that means it is two. It starts by increasing, so it is positive two. We need to determine our period. And we need to determine our period. Um, so if we look at the graph here, and we look at what's labeled, I have three pi labeled over here, but is that one period? By the time we get to three pi, have we gone through one period? No, how many have we gone through? Two. We've gone through two periods um, by the time we got to three pi. So, it took three pi units to do two periods, so how much does that mean it would be for one period? over 2. Okay, so if we divide 2 pi by 3 pi over 2, that's going to give us 2 pi times 2 over 3 pi. Pi's are going to cancel. 2 times 2 is 4, that's 4 over 3. So we've got 4 over 3x. Inside of a function, you could write that as 4x over 3 if you really wanted to. Okay? Let's look at two more. Okay. Is this one sine or cosine? Is it symmetric over the y-axis? Is it symmetric over the y-axis? Yep. So that means it is cosine. That means it is cosine. Okay. No, cosine starts off. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so it is cosine. Is our midline the axis? No, it is not. Our maximum, I know I didn't do a very good job of drawing this, but it's supposed to be 2, okay, in both places. Uh, the maximum is 2, and uh, the minimum is uh, negative 6. I don't know why I 
I didn't extend the uh, labeling there, but this is negative 6 down here. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So that means that we have shifted it down two units. Okay, it shifted down two units. You can see these points right here in the middle. They're at negative two. So we've got minus two on the end. What is our amplitude? Okay. The amplitude is always positive, so it's four, but this one does start at the minimum value. Okay, typically cosine starts at the maximum value, but this one starts uh, down at the minimum, so that is going to be a coefficient of uh, negative four. That is going to be a coefficient of negative four. What is our period here? We start right here, we end up right there at 4 pi, so our period is 4 pi, so we 2 pi divided by 4 pi. The pi's cancel, 2 over 4 is 1 half, so that means that x over 2 is the angle inside of our cosine function, or you could write it as 1 half x, however you want to write it. One more example. How much y'all want to bet it's not going to be cosine? It is sine. Okay. How do I know that? It's not symmetric about the y-axis. Okay. If I flip this side, if I flip the right side of the function over, it's not going to lay on the left side of the function. So this is a sine. Uh, is our midline, I don't know why I just put x right there, it is not x. Okay, uh, is, has our midline been changed? No, it has not. It is centered on the axis here, um, so we don't have to add or subtract anything from our function. Our amplitude is what? One half. Is there something we need to add to that? We need to add a negative because typically sine starts by increasing. This one started decreasing, so it is negative one half. Uh, what is our period? What's the length of our period? Pi over two, probably the value that's labeled right there. So two pi divided by pi over two. Flip and multiply. The pi's cancel, 2 times 2 is 4, 4x four is our angle there. Notice that when that coefficient b is greater than 1, our period ends up smaller than the standard period. Okay, whether it was 4, or 3 halves, or 8, okay, any time that coefficient b is greater than 1, your period's going to end up shrinking. When it's less than one, it's a one half. Uh, if it's um, uh, like pi over six or something like that, if it's less than one, then your uh, period is going to end up expanding. It's going to end up longer uh, than the standard two pi. Okay. 